Today, American farmers are harvesting approximately 3 billion bushels of soybeans per year. 80% of the crop George Washington Carver championed is used for protein and food products for both human and animal consumption. The other 20% is used to produce soy oil, which, as Carver demonstrated, can be used for a variety of purposes. One of the fastest growing applications for the oil is in biodiesel technology. Biodiesel is a diesel fuel replacement that's made from uh, any vegetable oil or animal fat. Uh, and the way that it's made is you take a, a vegetable oil and you react it with an alcohol like ethanol or methanol and that reaction causes the glycerin to separate from the oil and the, the resulting chemical compound is biodiesel and it acts very chemically similar to diesel fuel in a diesel engine except that it is uh, ten times less toxic than table salt and biodegrades as fast as sugar. The roots of biodiesel fuel go back to the 1930s when Carver and Henry Ford recognized the need to find alternative fuels. With the economy facing a depression, they tried to turn the tide by applying more agricultural products to growing industrial markets, like plastics and rubber. Mr. Carver and Mr. Ford saw that the depletion of fossil fuels was inevitable. They looked for the use of plants like soybeans to be that fuel of the future. Carver and Ford believed that vegetable oils could be used to fuel internal combustion engines. And they were not alone in that conviction. Dr. Rudolf Diesel was a German scientist who invented the first diesel engine. It's a compression ignition technology that's much more fuel efficient. And he ran that first engine on peanut oil. And he was a scientist along with uh, George Washington Carver and Henry Ford. Uh, all scientists who had a vision for sustainability and renewable energy through agriculture. The high cost of agricultural energy sources compared to petroleum-based fuel held the technology back. Fossil fuels were abundant and cheap, but today that gap is closing. In the last three years, for example, uh, the price of biodiesel has come down dramatically while the price of diesel fuel has almost doubled. In just five years, the biodiesel industry has gone from research and development to the open road. It has been tested over 50 million miles in every type of diesel engine. Now there are more than 500 commercial fleets using various blends of biodiesel, including all four major branches of the military, uh, federal government fleets, municipal fleets. George Washington Carver was not only a pioneer in the biodiesel field, he also took some of the first steps into the area of genetic engineering. Carver created hybrids with the flowers and plants in his laboratory by painstakingly crossing two specimens and waiting patiently for the results. And it can take years of crossing and back crossing and selecting for the better quality. Today, a new generation of research scientists is assembled at Tuskegee University to conduct experiments in all facets of biotechnology. One objective of the research is to find ways to transplant genes from one organism into another. We kind of carrying on the legacy of carvers in terms of crop improvements of nutritional quality or biological resistant quality for better human health and nutrition. Tuskegee scientists are currently working on a gene that will increase the amount of amino acid in sweet potatoes. More amino acid translates to a higher protein level in the crop. So we have improved the quality of sweet potato by fivefold, making sweet potato as good as soy, soybean uh, protein. So that's a big um, legacy of cover that we carry also. Carver's extensive experiments with the sweet potato focused on its nutritional properties. He knew that planting sweet potatoes would replenish the soil with important nutrients. 
He urged farmers to make it a part of their crop rotation plan and taught his students how to plant the potato and care for it on campus. This way they'd be able to teach others how to cultivate this iron and protein rich food. In his laboratory experiments, he succeeded in creating more than a hundred products from the sweet potato, including fabric dyes and flour. During World War I, wheat shortages in the United States raised demand for Carver's sweet potato flour. It was used to make bread to feed American soldiers and their allies. Carver's innovative work with the sweet potato was among his many success stories that inspire today's Tuskegee researchers. Here, the march of science is measured by his example. I think he'll be happy. We work in his building there, and I think sometimes we think like we see him walking around and say, yes, go on, you're doing a good job. George Washington Carver's vision knew no bounds, and the long shadow of his legacy is about to go stratospheric. <laughs>